Hello everyone, this is Dr. Clark from the Center for Weight Loss Success. On this podcast of Doc Weight Loss, we're going to be talking to Dawn Olson. We're going to talk a little bit about meal planning. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back everyone, this is Dr. Clark and today on this podcast we are talking about meal planning. We're talking to Dawn Olson who's one of the trainers here at the Center for Weight Loss Success but she also oversees the fitness side of the whole thing and all of the education as well. And we're talking about meal planning so kind of let's dive into this a little bit. What's Dawn, what's one of the best ways for a person who's thinking about meal planning to start with meal planning? Okay, well like a lot of other things, I really like to start with a written plan. It's great to have it in your head, but when you see it in writing, it just it makes it kind of gel. So we've got some great, uh, we've got a great weekly meal planner on our, uh, well both on the membership site as well as on the website. Uh, it's in a PDF form so you can print it, print it out or download it to so save it in a file. Um, it's got a column for your shopping list as well, as well as notes at the bottom. Um, on the membership site, you're going to find it in the bonus features. Um, that's a tab on the side. And if you hover over that, you're going to see the recipes created with you in mind. If you click on that, you're going to find the uh, weekly menu planner all the way down at the bottom of the page where it says extras. Um, you're also going to find some journaling pages there. So beyond uh, planning your menus, it's great to journal your foods every day. Um, now on the main website, um, you're not actually going to have a tab that says recipes, but if you go into the search bar at the top and type in recipes, that page should pop up. And once again, the form that you're going to find is a PDF downloadable file. Uh, you can print it from there and it's down at the bottom of that page. Um, another place to find it is on our Pinterest page. If you haven't been to our Pinterest page, it's a great resource for a lot of different things, but you're going to find this particular form pinned under the great protein, low carb recipes ideas. And I think it's also probably someplace else on there too, but that one I know is for sure. Now with that all said, um, there's really not a, a perfect way for, for just everybody. Uh, you have to kind of play with a few ideas and see what works for you. Um, some people will use a monthly calendar. I like to use a weekly calendar. If I start planning things a month out, things get messed up and well then I end up with more food than I can actually use. So a weekly calendar format really works well with, with me and that's what we've got online is a weekly one. Um, with that being said too, oh, where do you start with that? You've got a bunch of boxes and, and what to put in them. I like to start with my protein target. I know what my protein target is and I know what my calorie parameters are so that gives me a total that I want to reach at the end of the uh, the end of the day. Um, protein's the priority there, and if you know what your pr protein target is, you can pencil that in right away and kind of work work the math from there. Um, the next thing I normally do is I check my freezer or my refrigerator to find out if there's something that I need to use up because there's no sense uh, letting a, a couple zucchini or something like that go to waste if I can work those into my menu. Um, typically I work backward from dinner, however, then again, my breakfast Monday through Friday are, are always the same. I start it with a weight and inches protein shake and so there's my 29 grams of protein every breakfast. So the weekends are different though and then I definitely work backwards from dinner if I know what that's going to be. Um, I really enjoy cooking so my main protein options, um, that's kind of where I, I like to have fun. Um, I love looking on Pinterest for recipes. However, our selection on both the membership site and the website are great too. Um, I'll start with that and uh, put my sides in from there. There's a lot of good websites out there too that can provide low carb um, entree options. So just kind of get out there and, and play with some things. You know, Google low carb options or entrees, dinners, whatever words you use, you're going to find a lot of things that pop up. Um, some of them are better than others. Some of them break down the nutritional count. Some of them don't. So be a little leery about the ones that don't provide you with all the information. Um, consider how much time you might have to prepare dinners. Uh, my weekday menus are usually more simple than my weekend menus. Um, so 
whether you're cooking by yourself or whether you're cooking with someone else or maybe someone else is actually making dinner for that that evening uh, all those things need to be taken into consideration when you're planning your menu right, um, go ahead I'm, uh, well one of the things that that can be helpful for people and I think you kind of alluded to this is that boy you know starting at that looking at that week ahead and a lot of time a good time to do that is on Sunday you know, that Sunday afternoon, evening, you're kind of looking forward to, okay, what do I have to do this coming week? And we usually know kind of what's happening on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, what's kind of scheduled there. Obviously, life sometimes throws a curveball, but we kind of know what's going to happen during the week. And I really like that idea that you said of kind of starting with dinner in that, because that usually is our more social meal. And so subsequently then having that good, you know, that dinner that we can plan ahead of time. And this is, I, I know I'm going to do this and how much time I'm going to have. It, you know, Sunday seems to be a good time to actually look forward to all that. And then kind of building, building that dinner and then kind of going back from the lunch and the breakfast. Because for me, and I suspect this is true for most people, is that Dinner is sometimes the wild card of what we don't know, but during the day, our day's pretty well scheduled. So just like you, I typically have the same breakfast every day. You know, we like to think we have variety all the time, but we really don't. And so we typically have the same breakfast. And then lunch, okay, lunch you sometimes are going to want some variety. So if you know you're, you know, I always go here or something for lunch or this is what I pack for lunch. But still it's not that big of variety. Dinner is where it starts to get a little more complex. So I, I like that idea of kind of starting with dinner and working back and looking through the week. I think that can work very nicely. I agree. Uh, Sundays are great for planning as well as um, any extra prep work, shortcuts that you can take to make the week easier. Um, very often we'll grill something on Sunday afternoon or evening. And if you do extra, you can use that throughout the week um, for lunches or, or second dinners actually. Sometimes you can use that Sunday afternoon prep time to clean all your vegetables and you know package those for lunches or, or cut them up for different meals. Um, actually, even you know, making a second meal, making you know a double recipe. Sometimes, you may be able to freeze that second meal for another time and save yourself later, later on. Um, or have it for lunch. Right. Have it for lunch the next day. <laughs> right. Um, there's a great handout on the website called Tips on Low Carb Cooking. That might be something that you want to take a look at. That's on the main website. Once again, that's on the recipes page. Um, like I said, grilling or baking extra servings of meat that you can use on another night or for lunches the next day are always great. Um, like you, my breakfasts are fairly routine. My my choices vary between chocolate and vanilla, and sometimes I'll throw a strawberry or two in there. Um, but lunches, that's probably where my greatest variable is. Um, I like to pack my lunches. Um, they're great. Leftover options are always good. But if you know of the restaurants in your area that either fast food or, or restaurants that you're going to typically attend, most of their information is online if they are a chain that has maybe more than 20 locations. So you can pre-plan that as well. Pick your good choices before you actually walk in the door. Um, keeping you know pre prepared salad mixes and, and low carb wraps, things like that that you can make kind of a, an instant lunch with at home is always a good idea. Right. Certainly, you know, we always concentrate, or I encourage people to concentrate on what I call the core of the eating plan. You know, hydration, which is water is the best thing to drink, then good protein sources, which from food, the best ones are meat, seafood, cheese, and egg. You know, all of those are pretty, you know, accessible at home as well as most restaurants. And then filling in with kind of the colorful vegetable salad stuff. And if you kind of stick with that core as your main uh, eating plan and don't drift too far off from that, you're really going to be doing decently from that, even when it's not, you know, wasn't completely planned. Okay. Now, having, you know, said some of that, we, we kind of touched on it a little bit, but what about a few secrets on kind of actually cutting back on the carbohydrate? We, you know, they're out there, carbohydrates everywhere. It floats into everything that we're trying to eat. And so some secrets on kind of, okay, I'm trying to cut back on carbohydrate. What do I concentrate then on? Which is, what are going to be the low carb things I want to look at? 
what are some, I guess, some tips that you have concerning that? Okay, I typically look at my, my high starch items first. What would typically be served with, with certain things, you know, potatoes, rice, pasta, bread, all of those are our really starchy, starchy foods. And depending on which one of those seems to be what you would generally lean towards, what are the best um, substitutions for that particular item? Um, like with potatoes, mashed cauliflower works great as, as like a mashed potato substitute, but it doesn't necessarily work cauliflower doesn't work as a potato substitute for everything so um rice cauliflower sometimes works for rice um there's a lot of different low carb options most of them are vegetables that we can use to substitute for the um for the high carb type sides um breads for most of the the feedback i get from patients and and uh, clients Bread's not necessarily one of the things that they have at every meal, unless it's perhaps lunch. Lunch, they like sandwiches, but then the low carb wraps are, are a very good option. There are some high fiber breads that are available as well, if you feel like you have to have you know, a sandwich or, or bread with that meal. Um, when it comes to cooking though, um, so many people like to put uh, cracker crumbs or bread crumbs and whatnot as a coating on different meats when they when they grill or, or bake or whatever. But uh, crushed pork brines, um, nuts, uh, dry, I don't know, like, I like pistachios ground up in my uh, food processor to use as kind of a crunchy coating. There's a lot of options there too that can be used as a substitute. Things like um, the different squashes, spaghetti squash or zucchini if you kind of um, julienne it can be used in place of pastas very easily. We actually sell some things in the store that work great as substitutes for pasta as well. We've got a protein pasta that comes in a dry form, uh, and then we also have the little gel packs of the, um, the they're like miracle noodles. Right, but, um, right. it's kind of the, the, little, the little noodles that have very low carb thing that can be used as far as a noodle substitute type of thing. Right. And there's not much flavor there, so they're going to take on the flavor of the sauce or, or whatever that is that you put in them to to give it some some flavor. Um, they're a great option, and there's usually more protein in those options than there is in standard pasta as well. So, um, when it comes to like little sandwiches and whatnot, try using little slices of cucumber or or celery to put your egg salad or your chicken salad or something like that on. But uh, there's really a lot of options. Let, let, lettuce wraps work great. I love to take like romaine lettuce and actually add them, put my sandwich filler in there, if, whether it be chicken salad or ham or cheese or whatever. And you just kind of make a lettuce wrap with that. It's a, a great way to get the sandwich feel to it without necessarily having the sandwich. Exactly. They actually work well with some of the hot fillings too, like um, well, P.F. Chang's has got, you know, their famous lettuce wraps. They're easy to make, and we've got a, a mock recipe on the Pinterest page if you want to give those a try. They're fabulous and very, very easy to make. So, so no. long as you're... Go ahead. Uh, I'm just kind of... Uh, all right. That sounds like a great idea. My, my wife sometimes will do... Uh, um, roasted you know cut the the cauliflower up in small pieces and then quick kind of roast it and that actually makes a good you know something that has the texture to it but you can you know instead of the rice or something like that that will often work very nicely and it's actually pretty darn good <laughs> it is it's very good brussels sprouts works well with that too it gives you that that crunch that texture good right all right well very good well don that was great um what we'll do is wind this podcast up here. If you need more information, want more information, you can go to our corporate website, which is cfwls.com. Or if you're just looking more for information and discussions and in contact with me, you can go to our Losing Weight USA. It's losingweightusa.com. Sign up there. You'll have access to me as well as tips and recipes every single week. And I think that should wrap it up. Thank you all for listening, and we will touch base again on the next podcast. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.